Um, welcome everyone uh, to the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting August 2nd, 2023. Um, I would, uh, we have one member of the public, actually two, I think, unless uh, Jordan, you have you been sworn in? No. So you are still a member of the public. So we have two members of the public. I mean, we're all they members didn't, of the public. But... They didn't give you the crown yet? <laughs> no. Sight. I hope, I hope it's like fancy. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, it's sort of like the one you get at BK. It's beautiful. Nice. Uh, <laughs> um, so I, I didn't know if you had any, uh, or you can comment whenever you like during the meeting, though, but it just be, we don't really have any public comment. Um, I did send the minutes yesterday. I don't know if folks had a chance to read them. I did. Okay. David, did you? Yes, I, I read them too. Okay. Does uh, anyone, does, is there a motion to accept the minutes as presented? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. I'll yeah. second it. Okay. Um, Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor um, to accept to uh, accept the minutes of the last uh, Urban Forestry Commission meeting as presented. Um, any discussion? Any changes? Any updates? Seeing none, Bonnie, could we do a roll call, please? <clears throat> yeah. Rich. Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. And no Molly? No, she Molly just texted me. She's trying to log in with her computer and it's excruciatingly slow. Okay. Some, and some, Richard Parrish reason. not here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, okay, so um, I don't know if any of the commissioners that were here at the last meeting followed up with their homework assignment to, uh, because I sort of threw a little challenge there and asking you all what, where Victoria Bismarck was in, um, and this obviously is not Urban Forestry Commission business, but I did ask you to do a little homework, and I didn't receive any replies with the exception of um jackie balance sent me a reply so jackie you can you can um now you can spill the beans jackie <laughs> well i i will spill the beans it's only a small bean i want to know why you asked about victoria bismarck okay so victoria bismarck was along birch pit road between birch pit road and the river it was a agricultural land and in 1895, it was joined by the Clement Street Bridge to Bay State Village. That's why I know about it, because it's it was the other side of the river and the bridge made the connection. Um, and right now, Habitat for Humanity is building houses in that area, and they're going to take down some trees to put up solar. That's that's everything I know about Victoria Bismarck. <laughs> Well, th thank you. I if we you have won the prize, and uh, the prize is is that we are gonna we are gonna plant a tree somewhere in your neighborhood. So all you other commissioners My who didn't do your homework, I'm sorry, you're not getting a tree in your neighborhood. Anyways, I get um, a tree. Yeah, we'll get you a tree. I just I have to figure out. I can't remember your address. I was gonna stop by Warner so. Street. What, what's your number? What, not number thirty five Warner Street. We have two of your ginkgos in the front yard, and they are thriving. Okay. All right. I do not I will... have a volcano. They're mulched, but there's no volcano. All right. Well, I big, will. There's a big crater in the volcano. I will uh, send you an email and I'll uh, make arrangements to stop by and say hello. Oh my God, Rich. Thank you. You're you're very welcome. So the rest oh. of the commissioners, I'm sorry, no tree for you. Christmas in um, July. Yeah, jo uh, Jordan. Um, you we could probably get you a tree. It's just you're not a commissioner yet. Um, I feel like Monty Hall. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, that's before my time. What Monty Hall? <laughs> I know, I know. So that's really dating myself. Sorry. Uh, how about Bob Barker? Everyone remembers Bob Barker, right? <laughs> Price is right. So, mm -hmm. so the reason I asked about this ridiculous, this silly little question is because, um, when I first started working here, um, you know, 30 something years ago, I worked with a gentleman who grew up on, um, 
on Burt's Pit Road on the other side of Clement Street in Victoria, Bismarck. And he was of German and English descent. So, and his his grandparents emigrated from um, from Germany and actually farmed the land that's where there's, it's called the Demon Farm. And I don't know if it still has that name or not, but they used to grow a lot of strawberries. So you go to the top of Clement Street, take a right and go up Burt's Pit Road. There was a, there's a large white farmhouse there and that was their farm. Uh, they had seven, um, there were seven, uh, seven brothers, seven boys that all farmed uh, with their father. And so we, I heard a lot of stories about Victoria Bismarck. And it's also interesting because I do a lot of deed research and a lot of, I, we have access to a lot of the older maps um, that are really super interesting about how Northampton was laid out um, and how like certain parks became parks and you know, for example, like the where the statue of Sojourner Truth is in uh, Florence, that actually is not technically a park. That's actually just a piece of the public right of way. So that that on the map that I found from the 1800s, that is just that park didn't exist. It was just a dirt road where horse and buggy would, you know, take a right, take a left. But there was no park in the middle of it. So they decided to, you know, put a curb around it, fill it with loam, make a park. The same thing with Trinity Row, although Trinity Row in Florence is a little bigger park and there is an actual conveyance of that property to the city. So just historically kind of really interesting stuff. Uh, just call me like a historic wonk or something, but it's just part of the deal. Um, so with that said, uh, I don't have any other quiz questions for today. I'm sorry. So we'll have to wait till September. Um, I really, let's see, do I have anything to report to? Yeah, I do have a little follow-up on the public shade tree hearing that was held at 222 River Road back in May. If you recall, I talked to you about a, a tree, 34-inch uh, oak being removed as part of um, a uh, overhead utility wire project for National Grid. Um, so that that tree and all the trees are still standing there because n now uh, National Grid has to go through the environmental aspect of it and is working with the Conservation Commission um, to get approval to cut the trees down. So even though um, the hearing um, moved through the normal process and there were no objections, they still can't take the trees down because they're working within 100 feet of the uh, the uh, they're in the buffer zone of the Mill River. So um, that is that is that uh, that's that up quick update. So they're still there. Um, they are they are in the process of sending us two uh, two checks, one for um, the ad in the Daily Hampshire Gazette and the mitigation of the tree, which was sixty seven hundred dollars, uh, which I think is great. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, we I, I, I mentioned in a previous meeting that we had uh, secured a vendor for a trimming contract for this for this fiscal year, which started July 1st. So Bartlett Tree was the awarded vendor, and they actually um, just did two jobs for us. One job uh, was they did structural pruning on Avis Circle, which um, has uh, rows of, uh, of uh, little leaf lindens on both sides. As your Avis Circle is off of Ryan Road, first street on the right-hand side. Um, and those were planted as part of that um, development when they when they made that um, when they actually de developed that they used the old planning board um, tree planting recommendations and luckily they didn't plant any ash trees they're all zelkovia or little, or little leaf linden so they did a really nice job the trees look great the residents are very happy and then they also uh, pruned a very large and uh, stately American elm on the corner of Henshaw and Elm Street, um, which is, you know, in, it's uh, in retrenchment at this point. So it's, it's slowly um, taking its time, uh, fading into the sunset, but hopefully um, with a little bit of um, the pruning that they did, which actually they did it on a Saturday, they were there for about six hours with two bucket trucks and four staff. Um, and then we also did some. We also did a Dutch elm disease injection into the tree, and also um, put some fortified uh, in in the soil for the tree. So we're you know that that tree is one of the original elm trees on on Elm Street from the eighteen hundreds. 
along with the uh, other one in front of Helen Hills Chapel. So, and then we've been just our regular routine pruning contract. Um, we didn't really have any storm damage um, over the last uh, month of July. Um, we've had incidental limbs fall since then, though, because we the, the amount of flush growth on plant material is phenomenal because of the moisture, because of the humidity, the warmth. Um, I actually measured... On uh, Linden Street, I some of the um, tilias that we planted, the til the uh, satin shadow or uh, tilia that we planted, um, had 36 inches of growth this year, and those were in response to some to the pruning that was done this past winter. But I mean, they were I don't have them with me, but they're you know right off the floor, right up at my chest height. Um, which just, I want to mention one other thing. Um, in my travels, you know, I'm always looking at uh, plant material that we've planted or I'm, I'm taking stakes off or I'm doing some, um, you know, summer pruning of things where uh, residents complain because of the flush growth, they can't mow their lawn or the tree belt. And I happen to be uh, on Linden, uh, on Linden Street. And I noticed one of the little leaf, one, one of the tilias, uh, the sterling um, tilia was, sort of like losing its leaves and i'm like why wow, that's strange and the other ones looked fine so as i got i stopped and pulled over and looked at it and i was looking at the um at the leaves that were there and the, the a lot of majority of the leaves had fallen off there were a few leaves left on it and when i looked at the leaves um they had um, what appeared to be some kind of insect on the underside of the leaf that if you flip the leaf over it looked as uh, if it was a um like a felty feeling you would touch it and it was like a piece of felt so i flipped it back over i took a bunch of photos of it um i have iNaturalist on my phone and iNaturalist identified it as um lime felt gall which um has not been um which actually is um um only been officially found in the united kingdom from what i understand so I sent uh, I sent a lot of photographs to Tony Samiski, who is our uh, extension um, entomologist at UMass, and she reached out to USDA. So what ended up happening is that we I had to take a cutting of that the the next tree to that one because by the and I just did this this week. So that tree that originally had it has no leaves left. There's probably I don't know a dozen maybe. That tree is unfortunately going to probably going to pass unless something miraculous happens the tree next to it has the same symptoms so i took a cutting about this big probably so maybe about uh 12 inches and uh i sent five leaves in this cutting um to um um to the uh, usda um in maryland and they are going to actually um try to identify it and see if it really is lime felt gall. So if that is lime, if it is lime felt gall, we'll probably get a visit from um, the U.S. Uh, USDA or someone from the U.S. Forest Service. So it would be, and people have found it. So if you have iNaturalist, I don't know if anyone uses that app. It's a pretty good app. I use it to help me identify things when I don't, like I don't have a book in front of me um, or I'm in the field. And the people have, um, people have, you, you can look at iNaturalist and it gives you choices of what the either the identification of the plant could be or what the pest is um, based upon the leaf, the bark, the twig, um, the bud. And people then can say, oh, look, I found this lime felt gall and they plug it in there. So there's multiple people that have discovered this around the country. But for some reason, USDA has, you know, Excuse USDA. Excuse me, Rich. Can yeah. you let Molly in? I, I did. She's joining. It's, it's I'm sorry. Different. Sorry yep. to interrupt. No, so it's people okay. have loaded it on there. Yeah, people have loaded it on there and uh, but USDA doesn't pay attention to iNaturalist. They only work off of samples. So so that's an interesting find. And it was quite interesting trying to send the thing because you have all these uh directions you have to follow and you have to send the sample in a plastic bag and it has to be sealed. And then you have to put ice packs in the box and the box has to be wrapped and then it has to be sent overnight. So, um, so it was an experience, but I'm kind of, ex 
I'm saddened, but I'm also sort of excited to see what the results, you know, what the final diagnosis is. So I will keep you posted. Were those uh, bare were those bare root lindens that we planted there? I can't remember. No, those were grow bag. Hmm. But he but all those are grown in the US, right? Yes. Like the stock he uses. Yes. Uh, is it possible this pest you you've come across is something that is around, but nobody's bothered to get the ice and overnight the sample to it's the it, government. It, 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 it it's possible because it's a finger gall. So when, when the gall starts to mature, um, it comes, the, these fingers come out of the top of the leaf that actually look like, um, uh, I don't know if everyone's heard the term dead man's fingers, right? So th that is a fu fungal pathogen that lives in the soil that um, impacts um, decaying root material. So you'll mm -hmm. see like fingers coming out of the ground and it looks kind of creepy, but it's, it's so th these mites do the same thing. Um, they have um, like a finger that comes out of the top of the leaf. So that's what caught my eye. And then after um, going through this process, Tawny, Tawny said, you know, she said, it looks to me like it's Lyme felt gall, but I'm going to let USDA decide whether they actually want a sample of it because no one, it's not been confirmed in this country from what I understand. So, oh What's the location of the trees? Uh, Lin, it's they're at 17 Linden, uh, Linden Street. So it's at the end of Linden, right before you turn on a Parson Street. Thank you. Yeah, on the right hand side. And there's a whole row. We planted a lot of Lindens on Linden Street. There, they were looking like really good, good growth. They, yeah, hmm, that's too bad. So it's it's been a really good year for um, disease pathogens and pests just because it's been like so humid, moist. Um, it's been, it's been the perfect and perfect environment. I also found, uh, uh, I can't think of it. It'll come to me eventually, but it, they affect most of the cherry trees. A lot of cherry trees, if you noticed, ornamental cherries have died this year, especially ones that were probably in the ground for the, and the reason they, um, two reasons that they um, have struggled is because of the, very cold temperature we had this winter and then um the frost the frost that we had in late may so um ambrosia beetle so the i found a cherry tree on lyman road um that a resident actually emailed me and asked me about it and it was one that was planted probably f six or seven years ago um and it was looked really bad with the picture that he sent me so i went and looked at it and it had ambrosia beetle um which there's no um, there's there's no way to control ambrosia beetle um, unless you use like a skull and crossbones type um, in, in uh, insecticide. So it's not really worth treating. Uh, so the you know, the tree has to be removed. But there's been multiple cherry trees um, that I've seen um, that are you know been in the ground seven ten years that are completely dead, stone dead now. So. It's been interesting. I've learned a lot in the last month. So or learned something new anyways. But uh, it's been really it's been really nice because residents have been emailing and calling and sending pictures. And so it's nice to know that people are really thinking about um looking after their trees and when they when they start to fail, they're concerned. And so I think that's I think again, we're it's an unintended consequence of us doing a really good job as a commission um, and trying to uh, keep this tree initiative we have rolling um, and all the work we've done um, and others, Tree Northampton folks and other volunteers, friends of uh, friends of the Northampton Trails, the Girl Scouts. I don't know. So I could you can name everybody. I, I can't name everyone. I can't keep track of it all. But um, so th those are the kind of updates that I just wanted to give you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, Molly. Glad to see you're there. Thank you. I'm so frustrated. My computer was like, Ugh. well, you're here now. That's all that matters. I'm here. Um, and just in time, because I'm done talking. <laughs> Rich, Rich, could I ask a question? So the Bart, the Bartlett folks were awarded the pruning contract. Is that yes. is that are they going to work with the supervisor of school maintenance, Tony? Mm -hmm. 
or just the DPW? That that is just a DPW contract. Mm -hmm. So they will not they will not because uh, typically that contract is awarded to prune um, you know adolescent and mature trees um, that are not under that are not being trained as young trees. Uh, so when I get a pruning request from a resident, um, I actually will go out and look at the tree. Um, I will do a pr um, a brief pruning prescription if if the tree indeed needs to be pruned because if sometimes residents call and they want things pruned and they probably should we need to wait um, or because we've already pruned the tree but the goal of having this contract was to do two things one the streets that um, have been constructed in the last 20 years so like Avis Circle, Ridgeview, Village Hill, the Village Hill area there's multiple streets there um, Ice Pond Drive. So th those trees were all planted, you know, in the 90s, in the late 90s, early 2000s. So they've been in the they've been there for 13 years plus probably another 10 years in process of growing. So, you know, they're roughly like 23 years old, 24 years old. Those trees need to have a structural prune because they never had one and Tree Northampton and the commission didn't exist when these were planted. So part of the part of the the goal and getting this co contract was to do the structural pruning on trees um, while we still could. So it's basically what they call a routine pruning cycle, which is something you may have heard, like the utility company does routine pruning cycles of its transmit of its transmission lines and its distribution lines. But we're pruning from the perspective that we're trying to uh, improve structure, um, um, aesthetics, and health of these trees uh, and, and mitigate risk, future risk of the tree failing. The other reason we did this contract was because we have a lot of ma over mature trees that are all over the place that uh, are in desperate need of, um, a lot of them that need um, risk mitigation um, in the form of reduction pruning because there is a tremendous amount of dead wood in the canopy. Um, there's tip dieback. And in order to try to preserve these larger trees um, and hold on to them longer, we need to do more maintenance pruning. So those are for trees that are in the public right away and in um, on parks and cemeteries. But mainly, it's parks and public right away because really, it's all of, trying to prune is really important because we have only a finite amount of money to go around. But where there's a lot of, uh, for a better term, high value targets. So if you have a, if you have a tree that has a lot of heavy deadwood in it and it's in a park right next to a little league field or a softball field, there's people there um, not consistently but frequently. So you would want you would want to make sure that you removed all the deadwood. And um, because we are having um, staffing um, constraints uh, and operational constraints, the contracts had to be initiated in order to continue tr our tree maintenance program. I hope that answers the question, David. It's kind of a long answer. I'm sorry. Uh, it does. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Did you already talk about um, what you mentioned in your email about the shortage of um, of um, saplings to plant? No. And how that affects our choice of activities? Um. No, I we haven't we haven't talked about that, and I I didn't I just I got that from Rob, and I I failed to mention that, so I want to thank Rob. Um, Rob sent that to me, um, and I did respond to him. Um, but no, I mean, I we what time is it? It's eight. It's four fifty seven. So I mean, we can we can talk about that at the end of the meeting, um, or we can talk about that as part of the fall planting discussion and kind of wrap it in there if you'd like. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the connection of if we're not, maybe we aren't going to be planting so many trees this year or next year, but we could put emphasis on maintenance and. Um, you know, taking care of the trees that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, I, I think it's a, that'd be a great discussion to have. And I think that's sort of, we're sort of at a crossroads again. I think we, we have some, we have some things we've probably discussed under that fall planting discussion. Any other questions before I turn the floor over to Molly? Uh, uh, 
Okay. Um, Molly, do you uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the sure. uh, spot of lantern fly? Please? Yeah. Thank yeah. You. All right. So for next steps on that, um, I'm wondering, I'd like input from everybody and maybe we can all kind of make a plan of what the next steps would be. And um, maybe it, maybe what makes sense to do is to contact uh, landowners or property owners near who, who have an Alanthus tree on or near their property to ask them to keep an eye out for the um, for the spotted lanternfly. That might be the best we can hope for. Um, I guess we could, um, I don't know if there's other things we can ask them as well about whether they would be willing to have it be a trap tree. I don't even know if that's something that DCR is even going to do. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else we could actually do because we're not going to be taking down Alanthus trees. It sounds like that's not really something that makes sense to do. Um, but these people, maybe they'd be more likely to spot spotted lantern flies since they have Atlantis compared to other people in the city. I don't know if it's worth the effort, but, um, you know, we could develop a little card or door hanger or something to give people and knock on their doors. I don't know, whatever. What do you all think about that? Is it even worth it? Uh, I, I think it's worth it. And I think that MDAR, um, MDAR already has, um, information that we could pass along. I think that, I think that would be useful because we spent all the time collecting the data of where the trees are mm -hmm. and try to identify them on private property. I don't, I don't, I think it would be good to take the flyer or, um, they That's also true. have, they also have little, um, I believe they have like cards. little cards and we can mm -hmm. just. You know, maybe maybe what we could do is we could someone could think about crafting a letter, sort of like remember the letter we did to landscape professionals. Mm -hmm. We could just say, you know, um, hello, this is the Urban Forestry Commission. We'd like to make you aware of spotter this spotter lanternfly, which happens um, to uh, attack um, um, you know Atlantis trees, and you have an Atlantis tree in your yard. We'd like to give you this literature and. You know, please let us know, um, or please a lot um, talk to uh, call MDAR or the numbers on this, whatever form we give them, and then that way there at least people will have um, uh, some information. You know, but yeah, that, I think I think that would be a good use. I think that would be a good use of all the work that everyone's done so far to put into this, and that's just my opinion. Hmm. And I, I think would, that makes sense. I don't think that would be too hard to do. I mean, I could write that letter. That would be pretty easy. And then it's just a matter of, uh, you know, figuring out which doors to knock on. Um, I don't even know if you need to knock on the door. So, you you know, True. we could just put, put it in an envelope and, uh, you know, just put say. Put it in your door. Yeah, something like that. The only other thought, I, I totally agree. I think it's worth, you know, just having people awareness raised and then they'll talk to their neighbors about it or whatever and um uh, the only other thing i thought of is i think we did mention to the mdar folks about tabling at the three county fair like they uh -huh. were they were going to do it and mm -hmm. i don't know if it's worth contacting them and give them the dates of the three county fair and you know i i just think that you know, they have a whole, uh, you know, they'll probably be at the Big E anyway, I would assume, I would hope, um, because they are in Springfield already. But I just think it, that would be a pretty easy awareness. There is a ag building that has stuff like that. So, um, you know, we wouldn't have to do any lifting for that except the contact to say, hey, just reminding you, you know. So who would we ask about that? Who who would be our person to ask if they're going to be tabling 
at the fair. Uh, Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I think Elizabeth Barnes. Oh, right. That's that, right. She's the MDAR uh, person that came and um, gave a presentation to us back in the late fall, early winter. <clears throat> I was going to say that the state is doing a quarterly update on spotter lantern fly. Uh, there's a webinar on the 16th of this month. Oh, is that on a, like a Zoom or a, web, a webinar yes. format? Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. it's on Zoom. Do you have a link for that? I do. Yes. Can you send that out to us? You bet. Thanks, Jordan. Welcome. Um, any other ideas that people have or thoughts? No, I, I just think that whatever, whatever the letter, I think we should, we sh should use existing language, um, that MDAR has mm -hmm. basically to just to craft the letter. Yeah. You no, know, because in the end, if, if it is discovered, it's going to end up going back to MDAR. MDAR is going to be managing it. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. I I think that's probably the best that we can do, uh, you know, um, at the moment. Uh, Sue, um, couple thing thoughts. I know that we had a lot of flyers for um, Arbor Day. I'm not sure exactly what's left, but I remember that a lot of what's left are these posters that are more geared for industrial oh. places for where mm -hmm. truckers hang out. Um, so maybe you want to consider if you're creating a list of addresses you were going to deliver it to with, and I'd be happy to help you with that, with the um, addresses of where we've spotted Atlantis trees on private property. We might also add to the list the post offices and some of these other loading areas. I don't know, industrial drive or um, just a thought. And then I was wondering if um, you want to put it on letterhead. If I don't know if we, I don't think we have a commission letterhead or what you'd put it on. I mean, hmm. put it on Tree Northampton letterhead, I think. Um, if, if you needed gonna, a letterhead. Yeah. If it's going to come from the commission, it would go on, um, it would go on the letterhead that we've used in the past, which is a letterhead for the tree warden. Hmm. And then, all, okay, all you the, have. All, Gotcha. Yeah, and then all the commissioners, um, you know, it's signed uh, the Urban Forestry Commission, and all of our names are listed underneath it. So that way, there it comes from an official city letterhead. Does the so mayor I could, I could draft a a letter and sure. send it to you, Rich? Yeah, and you could look it over, and then if it's if it looks good, we could put it on the letterhead and print. I'll figure out how many to print up, and. Um, and I'll Sue, do you have you have the box of all the all the handouts? Yeah, right? in my attic. Yeah. Do you uh, does it have the little cards? I can't remember what was left. I mean, we pushed them out during Arbor Day to anybody we could get to. Would you uh, check and see what's in there besides those posters? Okay, so I will inventory it right after this meeting. Great. Um, I'm and sure return your email. I meant to do that. Uh, Jen, you had a question. Oh, I was just wondering if it could just stop at you or do, because it's on city-ish letterhead, do we have to go through the mayor or? Uh, I think, I think what I would do is I would make, I would send once the letter is in its final draft or its final form or draft, I guess. And it's on our, the letterhead. Um, I would send a copy of the letter to the mayor's office and I'll let them know that we were going to be sending this letter out um, to uh, residents that have Atlantis trees uh, on their property or near their property we've identified. Um, and, uh, you know, please uh, let us know if you have any questions or concerns about this. And if we don't hear anything, then we just send the letter. When you say send the letter, I'm assuming you mean we would hand deliver it to the house and put it in their door or something like that. Yeah, we could. Or the other way of doing it is we could, because a lot of the, maybe, and I don't know this for a fact because I'm looked at the list, but I'm sure that some of the properties are probably um, renter occupied. Yeah. 
So what we could do is if we could get the if we could get all the addresses, I could get a list generated and we could actually mail them. We could actually mail them uh, because every house oh. has some type of utility, you know, really? utility bill. Yeah. But that yeah. would cost so much more for all the postage. Isn't it like 50 cents a letter now? I I, I don't know. Maybe we get a discount. I, I I don't know. No, I mean, the postage is baked into our budget, so it's not like it would be extra. Mm. There's postage constantly going. Um, hmm. So it is possible that we could do that. So you can generate a list of who the renters are? No, of the the owners. It would be addressed oh. to the property owner. But, but who would think, do that work? Yeah, it's the renters who we actually, it's the people who actually live there who we'd want to contact. Right. They're but, the ones who are going to be the, the eyes out there. Right. But you're also going to need to send a letter to the property owner. The property owner has to be notified as well. You just can't just send them to the renters because this, uh, there's been, pro have had have issues in the past when I've gone to do a look at a public tree or a, uh, a, a setback tree that if someone wanted and I didn't realize that the person was a renter they were not the property owner so we mm. almost gave them a setback tree and signed an agreement with a renter mm. so, so I think it would be good to do both so we can generate the list of the property owners the of the resident the property owners and we can just if it's a multi-unit building then we can just put a, a letter uh, to whom it may concern you know in every mailbox on the building That's well fine. I'm still wondering if that's necessary because let's say let's say a renter did spot a spotted lantern fly on their and they laid the tree in their backyard um, and they called MDAR. Mm -hmm. What MDAR would? I mean, would they be contacting the the owner, or what are they going to do when they find out that there's a spotted lantern fly? Um, I guess they would have to, if they wanted to go and look at that tree, they would right. have to contact the owner. Yep. So they, they you need a right of entry to be on the property to do anything. So irregardless, MDAR has to have some kind of communication with the property owner. Hmm. But I think it would be good to notify the tenants and the property owner. So we might need, um, for the tenants, we might have to stick it in the door. Correct. Because we don't know their, um, their Co names to Co send them yeah. anything. Correct. Correct. So we, unless we, can, we just say occupant. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we can we can we probably should just generate uh, a boilerplate letter that works for everyone. Yeah. So. OK. And that and then we can figure out where the places are, who, what single occupancy and what is multi occupancy. And then we can figure out how we're going to address each location. Because some some of the buildings are owned by people that don't even live in the state, so I mean it's right. It, I know. So it, what's the point of? Because there is because if sp spotted lanternfly. So here's another example: if spotted lanternfly is discovered on on a private tree, and um, MDAR can't get a hold of the property owner, at least we actually know who the property owner is, and we've notified them. So the potentially this could this could happen. I um, mm -hmm. I think it would be. I would be it would be worthwhile actually doing it but i think let's get the letter drafted and let's let me do a little re background research um molly where where is the information um that actually the spreadsheet that has all the locations of the trees is that in our shared drive or is that something that you I have i think it's in the shared drive i'm pretty sure it is all right so i will look that up Okay. If you don't find it, let me know. But I'm pretty sure right. it's in the shared drive. Okay. All right. Okay. And then, Sue, you're going to look for um, any of the other, and I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the small cards, like the little business cards. Yeah, there were posters for truckers. Yep. yep. And there were posters or hand leaflets for the general public. And there were little cards that we okay. were giving out to with the, all with the directions to call MDAR and the way to do it. So okay. that covers that part. Okay. So if we need more cards, I can reach out to uh, MDAR and probably just go. Right. So after the meeting, there. I'll count them up and email Molly and Rich Okay. with what I have. That okay. stuff's free. They'll just send it to you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or give it to you, whatever. They're happy to send out more. Yeah. They are. Hmm. They are. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing. As far as um, what Sue is suggesting about contacting commercial, like trucking places, um, there aren't really that many, I don't think that, that there aren't really that many places in that category. I mean, there's the places on industrial drive. Um, there's the cement factory on uh, that's behind the DPW area that actually has a bunch of Atlantis trees. So that would be worth, I mean, I'm not sure what we're asking of them exactly um, <laughs> to check their trucks, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think we're, this is my take. I'm sorry to be interrupting, but I think we're just making them aware of the fact that the Atlantis does exist. This is how it's, it moves around. This is where it's been discovered. If you see any telltale signs, you need to contact MDAR. Yeah. You know? um, because I, I, I don't really want them contacting us because if we, I mean, and they, right. they can if they want, but it would be helpful to contact MDAR directly because they are the ones that are going to be ultimately responsible for dealing with um, this pest. Not, not really us. We're just trying to help. Yeah. We're just trying to help be proactive and let people know that, you know, this, this is, this is something that's coming. It is out there. Um, and please be aware. Um, you know, but I, I think a letter to the, uh, to the two post offices, Coca-Cola, the concrete facility, um, places where uh, tractor trailers and large trucks travel from, um, you know, from, from afar. Um, but I mean, in essence, that could be a lot of places like food delivery services. to Right. Yeah. City. You know, they, they're or coming Walmart. from Walmart. Yeah. Walmart. Um, right. Supermarkets. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I guess the question, I guess we have to decide how far and how wide we want to we, do we want to do this or do we just mm -hmm. want to send these letters and deliver these letters to places where we are, have, there are known Atlantis trees and leave mm -hmm. it at that, uh, you know? I would go with that latter option myself. Just, just to the known, where the known locations are? Mm hmm Okay. We could always do spot checks ourselves, like near, like behind Walmart or, you know, behind stop and shop or something, we could look on trees around there if we if we had extra time and energy. There aren't any trees near the post office. I already looked there. there. I guess although eggs could be on anything, it could be on cement. Right. I I found I found some Atlantis trees growing in Pulaski Park in the planting beds. Oh my goodness. Yeah. In yeah, the planting. Gonna... Oh, you know, well, you know, there's an Atlantis tree at the back of Pulaski Park. Yes. Did I, that's one of the ones I mapped. That's okay. We should just cut that thing down because that's probably where the seeds are coming from. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... I know it's a, it's a no win situation. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a plan. So, thank you, everybody, for your input. Yeah. Does anyone else have any thoughts or comments? No, just thanks, Molly, for bringing our attention to it. And I think it will make a difference just to give it to the residents, you know, uh, and the few other places I, you know, I think it'll help. So thank you for the work you did. Yes, thank you very much. L l big undertaking. Um. Let us know uh, if you need anything, Molly, between now okay. and then. Reach out to me if you need something, please. All right. Thank you. Um, fall. Okay. Fall planting discussion. Um, let's see what time is it? It is 518. Okay. Um, so I put this, I put this on here for a couple of, a couple of reasons. Um, and I, I just want to start off and I'm just going to say a few things about like 10,000 foot view picture. So, and um, please anyone interject at any moment. Okay. Um, 
But most of you know, obviously we all know that Rob has moved to Maine. Um, most of you probably already know that Alicia is moving or has moved to New Hampshire. So with that, um, we've lost um, Rob as our um, planting coordinator slash commissioner slash um, uh, Tree Northampton, uh, one of the founding members. Um, and then now we've also lost Alicia, who was coordinating behind the scenes with Rob and then stepped up to the plate um, with um, when Rob left to get the spring planting sort of keep the spring planting rolling in Rob's absence and then, you know, final departure. So now that, um, now that Alicia and now that Alicia is gone. And, and again, I I'm speaking from the, from the position of just the tree warden and a member of the commission. I don't have any uh, knowledge about what, you know, how tree Northampton is uh, their functionality at the moment, given the fact that two, two of the founding members have moved. Um, doesn't mean they're still not members of Northampton. They're just not locally involved necessarily um, like they were before. So I guess my question to the commission, and I want you to think about this, um, and please feel free to, you know, say anything at any time, is, you know, we've had this really great symbiotic relationship with Tree Northampton since um, 2015, 2016, when the commission first uh, was formed. Um, and I was just a tree warden. I was not on the commission, but we all, all like all three of us, the tree warden, the urban forestry commission, and Northampton all functioned, um, really well. And we, we made a lot of headway. We did, a, we've done a lot of wonderful things. And back then I, and I can recall this and, um, I think Jen, right, Jen, you're the only original member of the commission, right? Right. So yes. yes. So we we had a discussion way back in the very beginning about um, how we were going to manage plantings. And the, the original um, thought process was that the commission was going to manage the volunteers. Well, luckily, the, the commission was like, well, we're like, that's probably not such a good idea. Maybe Tree Northampton be willing to do that. So Tree Northampton managed all the volunteers. But then they also managed a lot of the um, what I would call day to day operations of planting. So they they, you know, Rob would spend time finding locations based upon criteria that the Urban Forestry Commission had set forward, like, you know, safe routes to schools, um, gateways to the city, um, a, a certain amount of setback planting, et cetera. And so that sort of morphed into where we are today where now Tree Northampton manages all the volunteer effort. Tree Northampton was managing, uh, helping me manage the source of nursery stock. Tree Northampton was helping us on uh, so, uh, source the locations for the plantings, getting the dig safes done, um, and then following up with the, uh, you know, with the aftercare pruning um, and just uh, site visits, also dealing with setback planting. So the reason I'm going through all this process is just to kind of refresh and remind us about the symbiosis that we all these three entities have um tree warden urban forestry commission tree northampton so the question i have for you is that um would it be wise for us to kind of take a little step back um not stop planting is what and it's not my goal but take a step back and sort of figure out um if the uh you know, the dynamics have changed a little bit and what role do you all feel um, we could best, how how could the commission best support Tree Northampton's mission given their loss of two important people and how can Tree Northampton um, continue to help us um, with our mission to continue to take care of the trees canopy and get trees planted? Because there's a lot of moving pieces behind the scenes um, you know, when the volunteers show up, like the tree is there, the mulch is there, the thing's been dig safe. There's been like five conversations with the resident. It's probably been like a year in process, you know? And so all of a sudden the volunteers show up like, Hey, we're here for a couple hours. We want to plant some trees. This is awesome. I mean, I don't have to explain to David, like the, like David and Jen, like the legwork just to get lead school, Jackson street and Ryan road, um, planted. I mean, that was like a year in the making of a lot of intricate conversations and, so the question is, is that how can we best support? Because I think this is my perspective. As a commissioner, we need to help Tree Northampton a little bit because I think they are they are going to need to 
maybe reset. And Sue, I don't want to speak for Tree Northampton, but I sort of feel like there might be Certainly. there might be, there might be um, time for us to be able to figure out how we can help you sort of reset, um, so we can continue moving forward. And is there some role that the commission can take um, that we're that previously we haven't done to help Tree Northampton through this process until we figure out like who's going to fill the shoes of Alicia, who's going to fill the shoes of Rob, you know, is it going to be a combination platter of different people, you know, and I, I don't know the answers to any of this, but I just thought we should put this because right now would be the time when we are, when like Rob and I would be thought, thinking about, um, and Alicia. I think the most about difficult part is a Rob was pretty continuously most days scoping out the tree situation in the city looking at the trees just feet on the ground eyes on the trees and then uh, alicia was he was having continual conversations with alicia documenting information um so with unless you have like a little group of people who are willing to actually get together and meet and you know go over these lists of where trees have been requested and try to figure out what makes sense for planting, you know, the overall planting and care plans, you know, do you see what I mean? There was like a continuity and a continual yeah. work they were doing it. It wasn't like just individual tasks. It was a constant conversation. So that's where it becomes difficult because it evolved, you know, with especially Rob's time commitment i don't think we can replicate that what do other people think yeah you jen um i've been thinking about this a lot because um you know when rob left i kind of really stepped up and was working with alicia and um things just unfolded and were really revealed to me like i had no idea like i mean I've been in this industry a long time. So yes, I had an idea, but I had no idea kind of um, kind of the, the timelines. It, there's this whole macro thing that needs to happen. Like in our industry, we need to like, we need to be thinking about a tree order for next year already, you know, if we're going to order trees and we need to have like, get those dig safes that we're going to do with somebody where we need to like look at what do we have in the nursery what are the sites we have and like you know let's do the low-hanging fruit first and then so there's that macro and then there's the micro of communicating weekly with rich to say here's the eight trees and then you communicate with the the kind of the volunteer thing is really hums along because um you know vicky's there and paul is there we have these like set times that we've been doing it so um you know i think some of it um i think it's a chance um to make our northampton's tree program more sustainable you know, it's a bummer both of them left. And I was, I, I've been like, oh man, what are we going to do? <laughs> um, so to kind of codify um, the planting uh, program, both on the Tree Northampton end, but also, and figure out the capacity there. And then also on the um, city end, like like, I would like the tree planting program to be go on after I, you know, when I'm not even walking around this earth anymore, you know what I mean? And so I think part of that is a sustainable urban forestry plant or um, uh, what do you call that, Rich? Uh, uh, a, a, a master plan, urban yeah, forestry. Master, master plan. plan, yeah. A master planting plan, urban forestry plan for the city but also to kind of um, get more of the systems in writing uh, so somebody else could come in. Like if we recruit somebody, we'd be like, oh, we need somebody to blah, blah, blah. So 
just in my personal view, I think, Sue, you're totally right. There's no one person that's going to be able to do this um, unless, and it's we don't have a paid position. I mean, in my perfect world of all worlds, there would be a position in the, uh, you know, city urban forestry that would be like an assistant or something that would kind of run the planting program and and we would plug in you know we've got a lot of people who are skilled you know at leading plantings or siting trees or pruning or you know we've got some solid people we can say here's a list go do this and it gets done and done pretty well most of the time um <clears throat> but i think i don't have the answer but to me there was two things like there's Alicia was managing these spreadsheets and um, that I think is key. Somebody who has the skill set that can and willingness to be the person who is handling the moving data. You know, oh, we here's the list of stuff we have in, you know, in the nursery. And then there could be another person who is kind of communicating with that person and um you know making a dig safe list and getting somebody to do that and um kind of thinking about what do we need to do in a month what do we need to do in two months what do we need to do next week you know i think those are two kind of i mean one person could do it but i think it would be a full-time job and we don't have you know somebody to do that right it now. is a full-time job because the 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 site the tree planting site sheet has input from a form on the city website it has emails that come in from rich and it has emails that come in from anybody else who gets an email from somebody who wants a tree that all has to go into this one place this spreadsheet and i have a list of uh, trees that stump grind, trees that were taking ground out and ground stumps. So then I was look going, I'm not finished with that list, but I was going out and, you know, so that all goes in the list too, you know? And then, yeah, the tab with the inventory has to be kept up. Right. And so even if you have different people doing things, it, all the inputs have to go into a central place. Mm -hmm. and then in citing trees mm -hmm. is also that's complicated because you have to understand what the inventory is that's available in the future for when you're going to be planting the trees so you can have a conversation with the neighborhood about what kind of trees you're planting and then um there's a lot of things i would learn when i would do it with rob that he had learned through years of experience of doing it. Oh, well, we tried doing this type of tree here and we haven't, you know, that hasn't worked out very well. And we want to move away from that. And we've got a lot of these, you know, Turkish filberts. Um, let's try to sell those. They'd work, they'd be happy here. You know, meanwhile, the, the homeowner's like, I want a pretty flower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're like, it's a lot to juggle. Mm -hmm. And then just how it will look. What are the other trees around? How old are the other trees on the street? So like, what's it going to look like in succession over time? What makes sense for that street? Um, again, all based on like understanding like, oh yeah, we have these trees and these trees that need to get into the ground in six months, a year. <laughs> So, um, sorry, I, the only thing I can think of is if you had, like, a group that was willing to meet weekly and yeah. go over that and put their minds together about, okay, we've got, this is what we have for inventory, this is how, what we have for tree requests, and this is what we have from looking at the city in terms of bus stops and schools and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. priority planting spots. And then, you know, coming up with that. And then the, the end part is, okay, we're going to have a planting day 
how can we find clusters of trees in an area or areas to actually send people out to actually get them delivered and send them out mm -hmm. I mean, that's even skipping the whole dig safe part which i think christina was really helpful with maybe or somebody was doing that but um we can get people to go do the dig safe like to put the stake in take the photo right. but it was we then we sent it to alicia and she like I don't know where it went after that, but she made it happen, you know? She formatted so, things and, yeah. and organized them and put them and transferred them to the DPW in packages. Right, right. So, it, yeah, the things like go out and take a photo at this address and put a stake in and use the paint. That's like something you can assign to a person. It's a discrete task. Whereas this other part about, you know, what's in the inventory, what is priority to get in the ground, that's, and, you know, what's already growing on the site, all that stuff gets rather um, nuanced. Mm -hmm. That's so why I thought maybe a group could do it. I don't know. So I, I have a, I have a question for you. Um, what what do you feel the capacity of uh, Tree Northampton is for this fall? At pr presently, well, without certainly without... getting volunteers. Okay, that's I don't see that as an issue. That's kind of like the last easy step in the whole thing. But um, <clears throat> it's then there's not a lot of capacity. They were doing all the work for all those other steps. There wasn't anybody else really doing it. You know, once in a while I'd help Rob would call up and say, where do you think we should plant this Saturday or something if Alicia was away? And we'd look at some lists of trees and locations and look at the map and see where they were and see what sent, what would make sense for deliveries for that week. And then he'd call you. And <laughs> so I'd fill in a little bit, but um, it's a lot. I mean, I work full time. <laughs> it's a lot to, you know, say, I'll try to do it. I don't want to let everybody down. No, but I mean, I, I think so. Listening to both you and Jen and, and please, I don't know if David or Molly, you have any comments about any of this, but the way that I'm looking at viewing this is that we need to sort of like think about this first and foremost, all of what we just talked about and sort of maybe limp along this fall and get, um, we need to look, I need to get a hold of that spreadsheet. I need to look at it. We need to figure out where we're going to plant with the nursery stock that we have. Um, and I, I need to know whether we want to plant bare root stock from Chestnut Ridge, whether you want me to do another tree order from um, Amherst Nursery, another tree contract, because that's sort of what we'd be doing at this point. But I, but I think over the winter, it might be, it might be good for us to sort of try to figure out um, uh, the the roles that we're just discussing, who's going to actually do what. Like and, job and, descriptions. and yeah. yeah. And, and does, and does the urban forestry commission have to help out in a different way than they haven't done in the past, you know, and I don't know the answer to that question. Right. Um, you know, we all have full time jobs. We're all working. We're all doing something, and and it's a lot to do. And and uh, I totally hear you, Sue. Uh, Rob was just like Rob was like on call like twenty four seven. Like you just yeah. call and say, Rob, can you meet me? Oh yeah, I can be there. You know. And there's it, a five page draft of outlining all of the all of the different activities involved. Oh, and the roles. That Rich just... Parrish had worked on, Christina had worked on it, Alicia had worked on it, and um, we could move forward with that and share it with you, Rich. I think it would be good if we if we could have a get together sometime and see what's in the inventory. Show you know, share, make sure you have access to all these lists that were used to do all this work. Look at yes, the we... sites on the list compare it to the inventory and see what we want to try to do from what's in existence before we commit to ordering. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in total agreement with that. I, and I, again, then I, that'll give us, 
a little bit of time too this winter to try to figure out how we're going to move forward to make this sustainable like Jen is like Jen has been mentioning and I think we've all been thinking about this in the back of our mind and it doesn't become crisis until the the main person who was the two main people that were sort of making it happen sort of like disappear um yeah. they haven't disappeared but they just they're they have different things going their on lives their lives change yeah. Yeah. yeah things things change all the time nothing you know nothing you know, we is- talk about you know trying to patch together grants to try to have tree northampton pay somebody to do this work um i don't know how realistic that really is um but um we should definitely talk about it and talk about so i don't know are fridays good for you rich if we could try to put together a friday initial meeting and uh Oh, Jen? Jen wanted to say something. Yeah, in the short term, I am willing to, you know, I can't certainly do it all because I am particularly not the person for developing spreadsheets. Like, I can read them. I can use them. But, um, I mean, I certainly could learn how to do it, but I think the learning curve would be my, I think, well, let me put it this way. My skill set would be better used other places. (laughs) I like spreadsheets. Yeah. Um, I'd be happy to do that on a trial basis this fall. Yeah. If we like had a meeting and then we review what's in there right now (laughs) and then figure out, we're going to need a little more notes because Alicia kept a lot of the ongoing notes just in her email. You know, she just use your, she would just store them in the email and then do a search when she need by address when she needed um, to, to go on to the next step. But um, yeah, I'm very willing yeah. to, to throw a chunk of time at it. You know, I intended on doing that anyway. Um, yeah. On you know, Fridays so in summer, I'm I'd be happy to start meeting on Fridays. Um, and I'm available, Rich, like if you, you know, whatever, need me to go like down to the nursery and do an inventory or what, you know, like I I totally have a lot of time right now. So yep. I, can. I, I, I think um, Jen, Jen sent an email, a follow-up email um, to Alicia and I, because we were trying to get a meeting together in the beginning of July with Alicia, but it didn't work out. And then Jen was gone for uh, Mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. And then uh, it's been busy at work with the flooding and everything else in the rain. So we're trying to connect with Alicia um, to have a meeting. But even if we don't do that, um, even if that doesn't happen, Jen, I think think we should meet anyways. And I think we should probably, I think Friday... We should set up a, a Friday meeting, um, like a standing and, meeting. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and if it happens to be that it's you, I, and Sue, um, we, we're going to have to post it. We just we'll make it just mm-hmm. an agenda, and we'll just post it, and that mm-hmm. way there it'll be in person public meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, the only problem with that is that I believe they have to be recorded, so I have to figure out how to do that. Um, um so. But I think it would be good because, you know, it's August. Yeah. Um, we, we have yeah. left, for example, we just, we have leftover dig safes from last uh, spring that um, I, that are still, that are not pending that were approved. I need to get extensions on them so we can actually um, go back and plant those trees because we stopped planting. Um, and then we have to talk about places that were identified by Alicia potentially that I'm not aware of or we're not aware of. Yeah, I have that. Oh. Okay. I have the tree list on my computer. Like okay. I, is, I have the is, is that tree a, tracking sheet. That's the okay. name. The Google it. sheet, the tracking yeah. sheet. Yes. Can, can can someone send me a link to that? Is it it's a it's a Google sheet, a shared Google document? Yeah, I'm not sure if I can because okay. it's Alicia owns it. Yep, I will. Uh, I will try to do that. I'm not logged in there now, but okay, um, that's okay. You don't have to do it now. I just need to okay. see it because I just uh, cleared my cache. <laughs> so to yeah, go. it's okay. Um, Bumble because, around. You know, exam. I had an email today from a resident. We took some bunch of t- two trees down on Dewey Court today, and the resident emailed me and said, "I'd like to get replacement trees. How do I go about that?" 
So I need a place to sort of deposit that information mm -hmm. now because in the past yeah. I would just send an email off and mm -hmm. my assumption was it would get logged in on a spreadsheet yep. and then eventually it would pop back up. Um, and then uh, I have people on Ice Pond Drive who are concerned about the ash trees that are um, dying because of uh, emerald ash borer. And mm -hmm. so I said to them, I thought, it, you know, I explained to them we did a um, uh, succession plantings uh, at Village Hill and we're going to continue that this fall. So Ice Pond Drive could be a, a candidate where we could plant uh, some succession plantings before we take all the ashes down. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. you know, Armory Street, the street trees on Armory Street, all the trees we're taking down, there's going to be places to plant throughout the city. So, you know, I, I don't have a way to enter that data into that sheet at the moment, um, which mm -hmm. would be sort of helpful. Um, so at least we could have things to discuss and try to figure out once we know where the places are and if they're grouped together, it makes our life easier because we can plant a lot of trees grouped in the same place. Oh, that's, that's the life. Right. right. So, so <laughs> if you could share the, if you could share the sheet with me and then, um, I guess, Jen, I guess we'll wait to hear from, um, um, Alicia. Alicia. Yeah. So it would but be good. Go ahead. I emailed her to both emails. Okay. So private and her the okay. team are tested. And so the I only will... the only Friday I can't do this month is the 18th. I'll be in town, but my kids okay. get married. So okay. Um we could just maybe we could do a Friday meeting with Alicia if she's still in town and maybe Sue as well. Mm -hmm. and and i would just post it as a public meeting and then anyone's welcome to come from the from the commission or from the public um so do you just want to set one up for the 11th then that's uh sure. next let, me, Friday. Let, me, let me just look at my calendar yeah the 11th would be fine um Um, do you have a particular time? Um, Fridays are pretty uh, open for me. Sue, do you have time? The time I'm opening better? my work. Okay. Um, eleventh anytime. I'm off that day. Um, you want nine a.m.? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Just At make... Spring Grove. Yeah, that way there we can actually go down and the maybe we can just. Go down in the nursery, take a quick inventory of things. Um, and then uh, maybe Alicia will be able to be there. And in the interim, I can look at that. If someone could send me that tree tracking sheet, I might have access to it. I just don't realize it. That's another thing, too. So, yeah, if you look at shared with me, you might see yep. it. Okay. Um, and then again, I got to find my passwords and stuff. Let's okay. See. And then we can sort of try to see, try to um, muddle through the best that we can in the most organized fashion this fall. Because we we weren't able to plant, we weren't able to plant every um, every week normally like we had for multiple right. reasons. It was not right. just the absence of Rob or Alicia. I mean, there was there was issues on uh, my end, my ability to get tree stock. I was gone for two weeks. You know, I'm going to be gone for a period of time in October, two different times. So, oh um, no, yeah, it's all good. It's all for uh, forest, urban forestry related things. So that's a good thing. Not not that yeah. going to Tennessee wasn't good as well, but um, it's work related issues thing. So, um, but I would like to sort of get us have some sort of framework for the fall. Mm -hmm. so we you know because i the other thing too i worry about is that if we don't keep volunteers engaged yeah um, that I'm, did I'm a, happen this year we no, didn't I'm keep a, them engaged enough and we stopped getting a our usual <laughs> quick reply yeah. big group yep. we'd start getting a trickle yep and and what i'm afraid of is that you know we, our assumption is that we're going to have x amount of volunteers mm -hmm. and then we put out x amount of trees and then next thing you know we only have half the amount that we're supposed to be there or there wasn't enough response. Um, 
So, you know, I think it would be good to just try to figure out how we're going to move forward for an, in the short term and then think of a thank you, Sue. You got uh, the tracking sheet? Yep. Thank you. I'll look at it after our meeting um, and then uh, and then sort of figure out how we're going to move forward longer term. I, I think that's just my. That sounds know, good. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I also, I, you know, the, the other thing, too, that the, the big the bigger picture piece is the urban forestry master plan which I think is something that we as a commission should really seriously consider looking into um, and trying to um, trying to codify all this information and in, in some kind of a plan like that, that, but not only is the plan talk about planting, I mean, it talks about everything. It talks about tree, you know, the, the tree, it would be tied in with a tree inventory, a new tree inventory. It'd be tied in with existing trees, proposed trees. It would be tied in with the city's maintenance practices, the how maintenance practices are funded, um, you know, uh, routine pruning cycles. I mean, everything, um, you know, species diversity. Uh, it, it probably would end up touching, I'm sure, probably on zoning, um, zoning regulations uh, and how they impact uh, trees, maybe a, on private property and public property. So, I mean, because I really think that's sort of like the, the framework that I would like to leave if I do, when I leave is there is that framework. So someone else who is going to be managing this, uh, you know, being part of this puzzle actually has, is not trying to reinvent the wheel when they show up because municipalities, unfortunately, in, in my experience, and this is my experience, but I've seen it in many other places with other tree wardens. Um, there really is not, there's very little succession planning. It's just, it's just how the positions are typically, you know, someone like myself would uh, retire um, and they would not bring someone on board until I was gone because of the funding mechanisms. Um, and so and they reorganize. Yes. Yes. They, and, and right. They parse out different parts of your job, add right. some to others. Yes. Yeah. Correct. So, I mean, it would be really helpful to have like Jen alluded to, and we've probably all of us have thought about this, you know, when we move on, whether it's we just stop volunteering or whether we retire or whether we're no walk, we're not walking around anymore. You know, you want to, you want to have some kind of framework um, in place. So somebody can figure out, you know, what we did, how we did it and what are the recommendations. And it's sort of like a living document. It, it like an inventory, an inventory is a living document. It continues. It's like a tree, really. You have to continue to, um, you know, extrapolate data and input data, extrapolate data, input data constantly. Um, so that's yeah. kind of, yeah, that's kind of a just a bigger picture thing. But I'm, I'm just wanting. Thank you for everyone's input because I'm wanting to try to figure out how we can just move forward this fall. And you've all have given me some great ideas. And yeah, I'm happy to to try to help with the sheet and kind of. You can email me things and I put it in and we both have access to it. Yeah. And I think in, we in need the to... long term, it seems like if trees are really important to this town, we have to think about, you know, having enough hours of professional time to pay attention to, to all yeah. of this and not hope to be graced with some volunteers who work seven days a week, <laughs> which is where, how we got where we are. <laughs> Yes, Molly. Well, I guess I'm just feeling so like I never realized until the last meeting. I never even knew who Alicia was, much less like all the work she, that she did. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. And I don't think other people in the city have any clue either that like Rob and Alicia, that so much of the work that got done with the tree planting is because of those two people. And now they're gone. Um, and it, it feels like like a like a huge blocks have just been like pulled out from underneath us and it's hard to imagine how we're going to like restructure to take up all the things that they did in a coordinated fashion um we're not going to just find like other volunteers that are going to just step forward and be able to do all the stuff they did so all I can think of is that the tree commission is going to have to somehow like take up the mantle of what they were doing 
and somehow like coordinate it among all of us and sort of redefine what our roles are as tree commissioners to take on like somehow share that those jobs but it seems very overwhelming how we're going to do that um that just feels like those two roles not those people not being here anymore is so huge part of everything that we got done like we can't even talk about what we're gonna um you know a planting plan or like a you know master plan if we don't have people to actually do all that work that they were doing so i don't know I well i think like we cool. just have to one foot in front of the other like rich is saying and you know look at take a look at the inventory look at what we didn't dig, get done and realistically figure out like how many dig safes can we do and and try to do what we can but you're right molly it's unless you know somebody was going to every planting you didn't really get a sense of which i tried to do of um who was doing uh it. and Jen more and more started going to almost all the plantings and then you start to realize oh mm -hmm. the last minute there's always changes too Mom, well, Molly. I'm also thinking um like with this sort of big hole that we have right now um it's probably not the best time to like start thinking about setback plantings I think we have to just kind of regroup and manage the bare minimum Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I, I, no, I was just going to say that I, I, uh, I don't want to forget about setback plantings. I think setback plantings are like the future of getting large trees, um, yeah. Or, yeah. or larger trees on streets that can't accommodate them in the tree belt. And when people actually want a tree, you know, that's like the low hanging fruit that Jen was talking about. So mm. again, I think, I think once we meet and Molly, I, I don't know if you're available to come on the 11th, but it'd be great to have you if you have the ability yeah. to come over. Yeah, uh, I'll try to get a meet in person at Spring Grove. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'd be in person, and I just got to find a way to record it. So I've got to, I've got to figure that out. I might end up actually using uh, my computer as a Zoom call and just record it um, audibly. Yeah. So it's so but at least. Do you still have those little recorders you used to use when we met at the no. library? No, it, it has to it has to be have the ability to be posted. So it's probably what I did the last time we met is I, I use Zoom and I turn my computer around and just use the audio. But thank you, um, Rich, so much. Those little administrative pieces like figuring out that can really move us forward. So I think I think you bring up a lot of good points and I'd like to discuss them further and sort of figure out how we muddle through this particular season keep the volunteer engagement, which is super important because without the volunteers, you know, I don't think all of us on the screen are going to be able to plant all these trees, you know, so. Um, it's so, our leaders, especially we need. So I, I think uh, I like this thought. I, I like the 11th that works for me. Hopefully Alicia will be able to be there as well. Maybe, maybe she could be on zoom. If we do a zoom call, maybe yeah, I'll, um, I'll email okay. her again and right. try to call her too. Just to yep. And then, and then Molly, we could talk about setbacks because I, I, I need to see this sheet to see like how many setbacks there are and how many, et cetera. And I just haven't had, I haven't really paid a lot of attention to it because again, like you said, it was being managed. I mean, wow. I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart, how easy Rob and Alicia made my life as a tree warden, mm. you know, as a tree warden, like the tree warden or the city forester is responsible for basically doing everything you know and i've been really blessed for um and we have been blessed as, as a commission to have these volunteers who have done this and uh you know so now i i uh you know now it's time to get a little dirtier in a different place and sort of move forward and um keep keep moving but in the but in the end keep keep the keep the eye on the prize which is trying to get all this codified in a much larger framework so i i don't think this is well somewhat depressing to think about it's actually a good exercise yes. for us so that's a spirit positive yeah. attitude i agree every, i agree every day every day i agree every day is a new adventure <laughs> um so we have sorry to interrupt is david you do you have anything you want to add you i didn't we didn't well, hear from I, just that um 
I would love to attend the the Friday meeting too. Okay. And if there's if we're volunteering I for for roles, I, I I always enjoyed going with Rob to meet people who wanted to host setback trees. Fantastic. And I think I I think I I would be decent at just listening to what people want and mm. relaying the information. So if that's worth anything. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, Sue. Yeah, it'd be great it if you were there to understand the inventory. Pardon? I'm sorry. It might be helpful um, if you could share um, the uh, tree tracking sheet with everyone just so people like, can see it. May I share screen now? No, not now, but I mean email. E email it to people so they can actually look at it on their own before this meeting so that people that are going to attend. Yeah. So, so they're okay. familiar with so they're familiar with what's on the sheet. Just so they, so we can have, um, I guess, a quicker discussion about it. I'm if concerned that somebody might click somewhere. Um, well, just uh, you, you have to, you, you, you have to uh, just edit their permissions if you don't want them to mess with it. Okay. In the upper right corner, there's a little doohickey that tells about they, permissions. They can just be viewers. So yeah. there's viewers, editors, and owners. So you just want people to be viewers. Okay. And then I think um, it would be good for us to uh, hear from Alicia about what her, if there's any capacity or or is, is it possible that she would want to manage this sheet if we just keep entering the data. Um. But obviously, there's going to be limitations. And if she's not going to be able to manage the sheet, then we have to figure out how we're going to, who's going to manage the sheet and do the right. input. We can talk all about that on, on Friday. Um, so I will put an agenda together. I'll get it to you. Um, we have like uh, no minutes left. Um, two, two things. Uh, the uh, Urban Forestry Commission vacancy. Jordan, you have not been sworn in. But you have have um, did the mayor put your appointment for it? I have not heard from him. Did you know? I believe she did. We had a conversation about a month ago, so okay. she was supportive, and I think it was just sort of a moving it forward in the in logistics. Okay, all right. I can I can follow I can follow up with the mayor's office. I'll leave to figure out where they're at with that. Awesome. Uh, Thank I'll, you. Yep. You're welcome. And then. Thank you uh, for joining. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, Thank. You. Yeah. I'm very Thank excited you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited Absolutely. about it. Thank um, you. I'm looking forward to contributing. Um, I just two seconds. I just wanted that that those two articles that I sent to you, uh, along with the agenda, those were forwarded to me by Rob. You might have Molly. You, I don't know if you heard that or not, but Rob, Rob and I have been having this discussion about the Inflation Reduction Act and the amount of funding that's available for um, urban forestry throughout the nation and. You know, we were talking about the bottleneck that potentially was going to happen. Well, lo and hold, you know, they have done a study about the potential bottleneck for nursery stock. Um, I don't anticipate this year that we're going to have a bottleneck. I anticipate we're going to have a bottleneck in fo the following year or the year after, yeah. um, because uh, that that's where I'm going to I would worry. So we are in a good spot here, I think, because we are so far along. I think you're going to see a lot of communities um, mm. that are applying for all this grant funding. Um, and um, the, the gov federal government is very slow in awarding grants. Um, so I think it'll take time. So I think we are okay for now, but I really think I'd like to put that on. If somebody wants, if we want to make it an agenda item and have a discussion at a future meeting about it, I think it's a very worthwhile discussion. And I'm actually going to reach out to, uh, the uh, professor at uh, UVM to see if um, they'd be willing to share with us the scientific paper because it, it might be published. It probably, it might be published in like our ISA scientific journal. Like Jordan and I are both ISA certified arborists. We get a scientific journal, I think four times a year. And sometimes they publish these works in there, but sometimes you can ask the, uh, the authors if they would be willing to share the research. Um, Which specific article are you talking about? Um, in, in the, there is, uh, there's two of them there. One's from the guardian. The one that says there's going to be a shortage. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. The one from the guardian is based on the article that was, uh, posted, uh, at UVM's website. 
Oh, oh. So the UVM website just goes in a little more detail than the Guardian. Mm. Um, but again, it's not it's not all the detail because again, it was um, it was a research paper. Um, so, but I yeah, I think it's worth a oh, very worth a discussion. So. So that's that's it. Anyone else have anything else? Any other business they wanted to bring up? Just as as part of the planning uh, and sort of broader look at at resilience, um, sorry, of planting <laughs> and all that goes along with that, and and sort of referencing these studies, um, you know, I'd be interested in in sort of seeing what's in the nursery now, participating in an inventory, and you know, perhaps. Uh, building out our own internal stock of what we think we might need, just um, starting stuff from seed. And I've, I've done that and uh, hmm. it works. Hmm. Wow, from seed. Hmm. Yeah. It, it or, does. you know, any which kind of way, but but certainly from seed is, is an option. Um, some of the trees that they mentioned in that article in particular, like red oak and those kinds of things like are accessible. You know, we can get seed or we can buy seed, et cetera, just kind of, raising that out, but I'd love to do a nursery visit when um, when the time is right. So thank you. Just, and we might want to talk about transplanting trees. Is that viable? Transplanting? That's probably part of this conversation. Yep. It's brutal hard. Yeah, well, mm. that's what I understand, but I imagine some trees are easier than others. Mm -hmm. They are so the, the young timing. trees just send that taproot down. You know they're so tough. Okay, I think I shared as viewer. I hope so. If you kindly check and make sure your viewers, that would be good. The tracking, and it takes a while to adjust your eyes to it because each dig safe roof is a different color, which is helpful when you're trying to put the dig digging session the planning sessions and in um figure them out so if we have any if we have any questions we can just email you directly good between, between now and then and I'll, and again i'll put an agenda together and, and email it to the whole commission um so at least if you can if folks can make it wonderful yeah um, I'll, try, I'll try to make it okay is 11th uh, i'm on Okay. Is is there any other anything else that was not anticipated by the chair that anyone wanted to bring up at this time? Okay. Well, well, one little tiny thing. Sure. I would love to give some kind of recognition to Rob and Alicia. I don't know. I feel like they just sort of vanished, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I would have. I was actually thinking of nominating Rob for that that award. You know, the Citizen. You know, Gazette. an award with the Gazette. Then I, then I found out he was leaving or had already left, so it wasn't really appropriate. I but. did not a year after year. I think Jen did year after year, and some yeah. other people have in town nominated Rob year after year, and they never picked him. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, but we I could don't know. we could think about maybe people could come to the next meeting. We could have an agenda item of how we could honor them. Whatever you know, we could people could think yeah. about it off off line and come next time with you know yeah. an idea and then we could vote on what we want to do because i think i think we need to do something i agree the impact is huge on yeah. the town yeah so, Thanks, sounds like a, Polly. Sounds That's like a, a great idea. idea thank you um with that said uh any other business any any other comments no, no other comments. Okay. Could I get a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? I have some move. Okay. We have a motion. I'll we second that. Jen will second that. Jackie's waving bye bye. Bye, Jackie. Jackie, I'll bye. be in touch via email. I'll so stay tuned. Um, all right. There's a motion, there's a motion seconded on the floor to adjourn. All in favor, just raise your hands. Excellent.